Hey, I'm beginning instructions for the bas relief textured tile assignment. So, I'm at the slab roller. I've got a chunk of clay from the pug mill, which is the clay I want you to use, and it comes out of the pug like a big cylinder. I have a toggle wire. Um, so, I'm going to start by moving the camera so you can see the slab roller. You can see I'm working on this pink thing. This is what I'm going to work on, and I can move it to my station later. But I only want half of this cylinder because, well, for two things. One, the sob roller can't roll over th something this high, and I just don't think I need that much clay. So I'm going to have half and save the other half for someone else. Um, even though I've cut it in half to make it thinner, I'm still going to hit it a bit. To make it even flatter. So now I'm going to remove this little canvas I'm working on and put my clay directly on the slab roller. You can see I'm putting it this way and not this way. That's because the slab roller will only stretch in this direction and I want basically a square piece. The tile that I'm recreating is a square. This is Pegasus. So I know I need clay to be at least that big and I think this will be plenty of clay. So I've got it on the slab roller. I'm flipping the top piece of canvas over. And I'm going to crank it over my clay. And then back. And then I'm going to lift this piece. And there's my clay. And I can see it's definitely big enough, so I did good. Now I'm going to lift this kind of carefully, you don't want it to tear, and set it on my canvas and move it to my spot. Alright, I'm at my station and the tools that I have are, one, the Pegasus tile that I'm going to recreate, the picture of it. I have a ballpoint pen. I have a pin tool, P-I-N, which is used for cutting clay. I have two loop tools, you can see. One's a circle, one's a triangle, so one's round and one's flat. I have some paint brushes, I have some water, and I have a blowtorch. So I'm going to start by drying this clay out a little bit. You can see I'm moving the flame all around, not just staying in one spot. Okay, so you don't have to use a blowtorch with clay. There's lots of things you can do to make it get more dry, and one is just wait with time, but I'm kind of rushing this. You can also use a heat gun. Um, another thing I have that I forgot to mention is a piece of cardboard that I've pre-cut the same size as the paper. So I'm going to cut my tile out, put the cardboard down, got my pen tool. I'm going to hold it vertical and slide it along the edge of the cardboard. So we call the cardboard piece the template. So these pieces I might want to uh, keep because I'm going to be adding clay later. Alright, so I've got my tile cut in the correct size. I think I'm going to stick my finger in the water. See how it's all bumpy? That's the texture of the canvas from the slab roller. I'm going to smooth those bumps out before I start. And actually another nice tool is a toothbrush because it will put little grooves in the clay, create a new texture essentially, and then I can use my fingers to make that super smooth. Cool. 
Okay, now I've got like an evenly cut, pretty smooth tile. It's a little sticky, which is okay because then my paper will stick to it. I'm going to do my best to line it up. You can see I cut my tile out. It was printed on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. And now I cut it right to the edge. Okay, so the reason we have the pen is to trace the design. The reason you use a pen is because it has a hard tip, if you think about it. Um, the tip of a pen is made of metal, unlike pencil lead or whatever. So I'm just going to trace everything I see and take my time. And make sure I'm applying some pressure because that's the whole point of this, that the lines will show up on the clay once I remove this piece of paper. I think I'm not going to videotape the whole tracing process. So it's going to take a hot minute. So hopefully you can see that using the pen tool and incising, I made all these lines more pronounced. Maybe you can also see that there's little things that I call clay boogers everywhere. And that's because I was cutting into this wet clay. Um, but I heat, I blowtorched it a little bit to kind of dry them out. You can see they're white. And now just with plain water and a brush, I'm going to try to smooth it. Um, water usually makes everything look better, but sometimes you can like overdo it and then you lose the detail. Like you can't see the line anymore. Um, but then you can just redo it. So sometimes it's a back and forth of like cutting, and then it's all rough, smoothing. You lose your detail, recutting, etc. But I can see to me, it's already looking nicer. All right, so now I've smoothed it out some. I'm going to do some more incising um, using one of the loop tools. So this line is like the bottom of the hoof. So it's going back into space. So I thought I could cut that out a little bit. There's one here too. Um, I thought that I could also do that on the border. So a trick if you want to do a straight cut, I think, is to use your pinky or something to brace. So I don't want it all the way on the edge, but close to the edge. I could also use a ruler to guide me, or even like the cardboard template I have. But hey, I did pretty good, right? Uh oh. He veered off course. I'm going to turn it. So the hair is kind of behind the neck, so to me that makes sense that I could cut that out too.
We all switched to this one. So we're still doing the incising. To think ahead with your design, the next thing we're going to do is called applique, which means adding clay to clay. So I just basically want a variety of textures. So some pieces I'm cutting down lower, and in some areas I'm going to raise up and add clay. So I can think about where I'd want to do that. I think I'm going to carve this eyeball out, and then later I'll add the round part in. Here's a little look ahead in the stamping. I think the nostrils like here, so I'm going to stamp that in. As you can see, I've been cutting more areas, like this leg is behind, so I cut it some and tried to fade it out and smooth it. Same thing here, uh, same thing under the wing, etc. Um, so now I'm going to start on some examples of applique, which like I said earlier means adding clay. Think of the word apply. So I have this leftover slab, right, I just kind of pinch some off. and might roll it a bit because I had an idea to add some 3D feathers coming up at you there. Um, just rolling it, you could squish it some. So the main rule you need to know when you're adding clay to clay is you have to score. Scoring means that you make little scratches and grooves into both the clay that you're adding and to the surface you're adding it to. So let's say I want to add this chunk here. That means I'm going to scratch here where I'm adding it, and I'm going to scratch this, the part I'm, that's going to touch. Don't be lazy about it, because if you don't do it, the clay is just going to pop off when it dries. Okay. So, I'm just placing it there, and I'll kind of squish it. I added water. Yeah, it's rounded now. It's another little one I made. So I'm scoring. So you need to analyze your own piece and see where would it be good to make it pop out. Where would it be good to make it recess down. Alright, hopefully you're getting the idea on that. I definitely want a 3D eyeball.
I might have to use a stamp on this eyeball too to squish it in. Looks pretty sweet. So you can see I stamped the background everywhere. Um, and this is basically what I came up with with all this work today. So you can see there's incising, applique, and stamping. It's not quite done. Right now I need to let this kind of set and dry a little bit. Tomorrow I'm going to smooth it even more. And I'm going to add little feet on the back so it's slightly raised. Because I'm going to use mine as a trivet, which is something that you put a hot pan on. Hey, so it's been 24 hours. Here is my tile that I made yesterday, and it's firmed up. It's not so gooey now. It's what's called leather hard. So imagine the leather on like a saddle or something. Um, that's it's not totally dry. If it was totally dry, it'd be white, but it's just a little more firm. Um, something I can do at this stage better is just brush it off, kind of like an archaeologist. I'm trying to get those clay boogers off still. So take your time, kind of be a perfectionist, because you are being graded some on your craftsmanship. Basically, are you doing a good job taking the time and being patient to make things nice, as nice as you're capable of? Um, so like I stated earlier, you have the choice of making this either a trivet, which is something to set a hot pan on, a surface that you don't want to burn, or it could be a wall hanging. So I'm going to make mine a trivet, so I'll show you guys how to do that. And I'll also show you how to bore holes in it to um, put hemp or leather or something through to, so that you could hang it on the wall. Um, first I'll show you that technique. So imagine this was this, right, the top of that. We have this special tool that's a hollow needle type of thing. That's a boring tool. So if you're going to put two holes, one here, one here, you just take this tool and turn as you go through and then pull it out and you can see it should actually remove the chunk of clay and then even then you want to make it even neater and kind of swirl a brush around in there or something so you do that on both sides obviously not right by the edge, go in a little bit. You might want to pop the clay out of that tool. Okay. So that's how you can bore holes and remember to clean it up after. How are we going to make this a trivet? Well, for one, I'm going to turn it over. You also need to do this if you're making it a wall hanging because for one, just for the craftsmanship thing, you need to make the bottom nice and smooth and even. But you also need to write your name on it because you guys are doing the same design, some of you, and we need to know who's is whose. Okay, I'm getting it all smooth. Basically, because this is a square and I want it slightly raised, I'm going to put make four little legs. And I don't really want it super raised. Just a bit. As you can see, I'm rolling a ball can squish it. There's one. Sometimes it's a challenge to make them the same size. Just try to pinch about the same amount of clay off. And that should make them the same size. You definitely want them the same height, otherwise it's going to be wobbly. So, the least that I ask what you put on the bottom is your initials, but you could write a full inscription like, Dear Mom, I love you from so-and-so in 2017. It's cool to put the date on things because then you can remember when you made it. And like, my mom still has stuff that I made in high school when I go visit her. It's cool. And my siblings. So you can see I'm scoring where these little legs are going to go. I'm going to score them. It's already kind of wet, but I can add some more water. A little push and a wiggle.
Okay, so my little legs are on. I'm going to check and see what's the top. Okay, so it's facing me. So then I'm going to write, write so it's not upside down. So maybe I'll give this to someone. I'm not sure, but I'm just going to write a heart, meaning love. And then do my little signature, B, with a big W. And then maybe I'll write... 17. I'm probably going to smooth this some more, but you get the idea, right? Okay, so I'll flip it this way, and now I have my trivet that's slightly raised.